Hello, welcome back to episode four of this series on teaching maths to children in English reception class, which is children who are four or four to five years old. I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and I'm here to help the teachers who want to do more than just follow detailed plan uh, lesson plans that have been written for them by someone else. It's not my intention to tell you how to teach. I want to help you really deeply understand the learning journeys children take in maths at this age and need to take so that you can spot when there are problems or when you're maybe not teaching quite as well as you could and so you can improve your practice whichever way you choose to teach. So in episode four we're going to look at the teaching of number in the second half term. I'll explain some general aspects of teaching number and then I'll go into detail on how you ensure children become really confident with the numbers six, seven and eight. Now you don't need to get that far. If you feel you're running behind, don't stress at all. It is so much more important that you teach these numbers thoroughly than that you rush ahead just to try and keep up with some kind of target. I'm just covering these numbers because I think it's realistic that some schools will get as far as the number eight by Christmas. So I want to cover them in this episode. So you've got what you need. So first of all, three general checks that follow on. The first two follow on from the last episode. Have you got your routines established so that children are going to rote learn their numbers to 20 by the end of the year? A lot of teachers do this by counting the children at the beginning of the day. In half term one, the teacher would have been counting aloud. Now you're inviting the children to join in um, with a view to gradually withdrawing as the year goes on and then making sure children can do this independently. So that's check number one. Check number two is your counting down routines. Some teachers may count down from large numbers initially and gradually ensure the children build confidence. Others may just count down from 10 until the children are totally confident with counting down from 10 and then uh, go up to counting down from 20 as and when they feel they're ready for the next stretch. Whatever way it needs to be built into your daily routine somehow. So if you've forgotten that, get it put back in. It might be uh, counting down for tidy away. It might be counting down for children going out the room, something like that. But it needs to be really repetitive and so children learn those number sequences as earworms and they just know those number names. Third check, and this is new for this episode, is that we want to check that all children are confidently conserving number. Now what that means is, <clears throat> let's say we're talking about the number six, which is one of the numbers you'll probably focus on this half term. If you've got six objects, here I've got six uh, Duplo cubes and you lay them out and ask children to count them. It's a reasonable task that they should be able to count those objects. If not, you can help them. They're still apprentices, they're still learning. And then you briefly put your hands over them and move them around. And then take your hands away and say, how many are there now? Now, if a child is conserving number, they will know that it's the same result because when you move objects around, the number of objects doesn't change. They may well check, but you can kind of see that they get that. And an ultimate test for this is if you're really clever with your hands, if you just palm remove one of the objects unexpectedly, then those children are going to be hunting under the table um, and they're going to know that you played a trick. They're going to be laughing. And those children have got the conservation of number. It's something that every child should have got by this stage. And if they haven't got it, you need to spot that and you need to intervene. So at some stage during this half term, you or a teaching assistant, if you just wander around the class and interact with them on their counting and play these games with them, and just double check to make sure they've all got it. Because if they haven't, you need to know because those children are going to be working far too hard and they're not going to be able to concentrate on the aspects of number you want them to concentrate on going forward this half term. So numbers six to eight 
in episode three, we talked about the 10 aspects of number that you need to develop and link together in the children's minds so that they create a really comprehensive understanding of number. And it's nearly the same in this episode. The list of 10 from last time was counting that many objects, representing the ob number of objects with your fingers, subitizing the number. Four was saying the number, five was hearing and interpreting the number, six was drawing the digit, seven was reading the digit, eight was exploring the meaning of the digit in the world of the child, nine was knowing one more and one less, and 10 was partitioning the number. Now, one thing has changed, and that was item number three in that list. With the numbers one to four, we talked about subitizing the number, which is where children instantly recognize that many objects, no matter how they are arranged. You look at any four objects and see that there's four. Once you get to about the number five, that's no longer possible. You simply do need to count objects or do small calculations of groups of objects. There is something different that you need to train children to do, and that's to recognize specific patterns of number. And in these numbers six, seven, eight, the particular pattern we want them to recognize is the pattern of fives and extras. It's there in so many bits of mathematical apparatus, the most important one of which is this. This is a fives and extras representation of the number six, seven and eight. And you may not think that's important, but actually being able to see those patterns underpins so much future work in maths. And that'll become easier to understand as we go on through these episodes. So which bits of maths apparatus might you be using for that as well as fingers? We want to do it in two ways. Fingers is one and everyone should be doing fingers. Um, let's see, where's my coat hanger gone? Here it is. Another classic bit of maths apparatus. Very expensive one, this. Your wire coat hanger with some pegs. Wire coat hangers, charity shops are great. Obviously pegs you can get anywhere. So we teach the children that their colours change after five. And when we're representing six, it would be this. You might be using 10 frames. 10 frames show this structure if you've been um, doing Singapore maths. Uh, what else? A wreck and wreck, classic bit of maths apparatus. It's the same structure. This is a wreck and wreck. In America, it's called a math rack. And it's showing that same structure. So a child is trying to learn to instantly spot that that is seven because it's a five and a two. And of course, this same intrinsic structure of maths is present in the abacus. And that could be why children in East Asia tend to be better at maths than we are, because they use the structure so much systematically and in the Soroban, in Japanese culture and so on. So throughout our work on the numbers six, seven and eight, we will either be working with that number of real objects, not particularly structured, or we'll be working with our fingers, or we'll be working with your chosen piece of apparatus. This is one I often use as a teacher that also represents this structure, the structure of fives and extras, because we want children to learn to instantly recognize these structures. So first of all, they need to count that many objects. They need to count it on their, with real objects, they need to count it on their fingers and they need to count it on whichever bit of apparatus you're using for fives and extras. And they need to be able to say the number if you show it to them. Can they say the number of what they've counted? And if you say the number, ideally not facing them so you know they're not lip reading, which can be a problem, can they represent it in their fingers or show you the correct number of objects. Then we need them to be able to draw the digit 
and in the last episode I recommended the communication for all number rhyme formation cards and they need to be able to read the digits so you need flashcards of digits you might have them on a number line that's fine if you point to a digit out of sequence can they show you that many objects can they show you it with their fingers can they show you it with their apparatus for fives and extras you need to explore the meaning of that number in the real life of the child get them to talk about it what does it mean to them connect up their home world and their classroom world make every child's voice count one more and one less a great ways of rehearsing and predicting the numbers round about the one that you're currently focusing on so the children get plenty of practice and develop those concepts of more and less and number 10 partitioning the number that's the biggie now because there's loads of work to do on it with these really interesting numbers six seven and eight I showed you last time exercises with two-sided counters if you've got six of them and you're throwing them in the air how might they land and you want to do extended crafting art activities that explore these ideas too so with the number six it might be your balmy beetles beetles of course have six legs and there's usually three on each side but with balmy beetles anything could happen and the legs can go anywhere so how many legs might you have on each side of the body and you can give them beetle, you know bodies of beetles and crafting materials or manipulatives to move around you can do this exercise in different ways at different times for seven you might do your shiny sunbeams where your shiny sun that you make in craft can have sunbeams in two colors and you get you can choose seven sunbeams and you can choose them in um, any combination of the two colors and you can explore what different people get how many if they're red and orange sunbeams how many red sunbeams how many orange sunbeams in your art for eight a great one i've seen is wonky spiders just like balmy beetles spiders have eight legs wonky spiders they're not necessarily four legs on each side of the spider and you can have your matchstick legs your pipe cleaner legs whatever's going on and by this stage you can start to encourage children to work systematically and moving one leg at a time so they start to see the patterns of all the possibilities that's quite a stretch for reception class but some of your children will really enjoy that challenge and that uh, chance to discuss that and they can then encourage their friends to think in the same way if you structure the activities that are going on to catalyze those kinds of conversations of course you can build your number wall that should still be going on for the number you're focusing on at the minute and you can just do displays of the different ways of representing the number and your different ways of partitioning it so if you want the scheme of work that well it's not like a detailed scheme of work but it's a, a plan that you can hack about and do what you want with that accompanies these videos it's in the expert primary maths planning group in on Facebook if you want to go there and sign up you can download it for free all this is for free this is just my passion for sharing what expert teachers know you've got these inspirational teachers who are doing incredible work teaching this really difficult curriculum effectively in the most challenging circumstances and they don't have a voice because we're all being told what to do um, from central government and it generally doesn't work for them and all this is about trying to share what they're doing give these ideas a voice and support the teachers who are trying to take this professional journey so if you support what i'm trying to do um please 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 comment on my youtube video critical comments are very welcome what could improve please like and subscribe and please share the video to groups that you're in and recommend it to groups i usually can't share videos to groups because if you post your own videos you get banned but other people who I don't know, they can and they can recommend them. That would be great. So I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you love your maths teaching as much as I do, even if you're working in really challenging um, situations that nobody else is in. Hopefully something I've said here will help because they are the most rewarding situations to work in when you know how to do it. Have a great day. Bye.